these strawberries in there. Chuck a few in there. Some mangoes. As soon as I came out here, I knew that it was going to be a good year. I knew it was going to be an enjoyable season for me. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to live with teammates, obviously, you want to be able to get on with them. And I think just generally as a whole, our, our group is it's, it's a special group. <laughs> Signing for Perth has kind of allowed me to unleash myself, if that makes sense. On a wider perspective level, like, this is... It's almost like I've fallen in love with football again. To be able to say that, for me, is huge. <laughs> I was brought up with sport. I kind of played anything and everything. Football was always my favourite. And not really knowing where it's going to take you, it obviously just starts as a hobby, so you just go with it as a kid. <laughs> I think I was around 13, 14, when I started to realise I sort of had something wrong with me. I started to get panic attacks as young as 10, 11, and we never really knew kind of what that was from or why it occurred. One minute, swap side, go kick, go kick. As my career kind of progressed and, and I started to, to succeed a little bit more in terms of like getting England call-ups and, and things like that, kind of going into high pressure situations, that's when my anxiety was at its worst. I would talk to my parents about it, but with mental health and stuff like that not really being something that was talked about a lot, Back in their day, I think it was difficult for them to even know what to kind of do. The way that my mind was kind of working and the effect that it was having on me in everyday life, it came to a point where I was like, we, like I need to do something about this. OCD is well, it's short for obsessive compulsive disorder, and it's, it's a disorder that is heavily anxiety related. You get a thought, and the thought is what causes you to feel the anxiety. Your mind is telling you to do something to stop that thought from progressing. And until you are satisfied with the way that you've dealt with the thought, you can't carry on with your day. I released a book called Brave Enough Not To Quit. And there is a huge chunk in the book about the OCD. And, and obviously, it goes into a lot more depth. The main one for me has been cleanliness. I've been in situations where I've had that thought, you know, my hands are dirty, or I might have touched something or seen something that's triggered it. And then anything that I touch from that point on would need to be washed, cleaned, thrown away. The levels that I would go to to sort of get rid of that thought, that feeling of anxiety, you know, it was crazy at times. I mean, we're talking hand sanitizer on the face, throwing things away because there was no way that I'd be able to clean it well enough standing at a sink, just washing and washing and washing until I felt satisfied that I could carry on with my day. The effect that it had on me growing up and kind of my, my football career as well, it's, it was huge. I got this after a tournament last summer in the Philippines. It basically means like women in sports, encouraging women to be in sports and find their place because it's not really like, I don't know. They just have to fight a little bit harder to get noticed, but we'll do that because we can. I think we just found out when we met Millie, aside from her being in the master bedroom, I think she's like, I have OCD, so I'm getting the master bedroom, and that's why. She has an electric personality, is what I'll say. She lightens up every room that she walks into. She makes anyone that she's talking to feel so, like, alive. She has, like, so much light within her, and she just spreads it to everyone that she meets. The first thing that anyone that is struggling mentally needs to do is, is accept that that is what's happening to them. Once you accept it, then you are in a position to be able to take those steps to, to start to beat it. I was pestering JC for a jersey and she pulled through. So I came home one day and this was on my bed. Over time, I've, I've seen various different counselors and therapists and also sports psychologists as well. Each one has kind of taught me different things and kind of helped me be able to unlock parts of my mind and parts of my brain that I, I would never have been able to, to do myself. It's gone from a point of being something that completely took over my mind and my life to now something that I, I simply live with. Why, Mike, more depth, please. Obviously, you come in open-minded. 
part of that is that she makes it really easy on us and herself to navigate it. We're always there to help her whenever she needs it, but she really has a great handle on it. And yeah, it's super inspiring too. I wanted to highlight the, the OCD side of my life because there's a lot of people out there experiencing similar things. For me, I spent a lot of years hiding the fact that I, that I had OCD and there'd be a lot of teammates out there that would, would never have thought that I was going through something like that. After the release of the book, I kind of have been able to sort of put that to bed and, um, you know, start a new chapter in my life, I guess. <laughs> From a young age, I've always loved the idea of playing abroad and um, experiencing different leagues. That's a dangerous one. Farrow just stumbled, but she scores! All you want to do is you want to move away from home and go and play football, prove yourself and, and kind of just climb, climb the football ladder. But the OCD was always something that was sort of in the way of that. And Millie Farrow, the hat-trick hero for Perth glory. But now, you know, I can happily say I'm sitting here in Perth. <laughs> I'm enjoying my football and, you know, I'm, I'm probably the happiest I've been in a long, long time. I've gone from sharing a house with people and having breakdown after breakdown in secret, <laughs> trying to hide the OCD, to now living in a shared house and being okay with it. 